God is good, somebody. Hallelujah. He deserves the praise. Yes, he does. Some of you kind of acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. Has he been good to you? Good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. God enables us to become overcomers. Oh, yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. More than conquerors. Yes. Through Christ our Lord. I want to just say from the onset before we get into the word of God that God is accomplishing his purpose. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We need not fret as though he is not able to carry out what he says. Oh, yes, that's right. God's bigger than life. And his word he promised that it would not return to him void of his power. I have that assurance that when he sent it out, hallelujah, it's going to accomplish what he pleased. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage somebody that's believing and it looks hopeless. God's faithful. To his covenant promise. Hallelujah. You need to let hope spring up in your soul. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Beyond all of our fears, beyond all of our reasoning, beyond all uh, the things that would stand in the way, our God will cause us to triumph victoriously. He's that kind of friend, faithful to his covenant promises. Hallelujah. You can trust him. To do what he said. Hallelujah. He had to tell Balaam. To tell Balak. Balaam was struggling. Because he wanted this. And he wanted that. And and the the reward of iniquity. Was tempting to him. He wanted God to change his mind. but, But God said. You go and tell Balak. God's not a man that he should lie. Man, man, man. That's right. Don't you feel that good God Almighty? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't manipulate God. My God, he's good. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Okay, I'm going to calm down because we're both supposed to be here ministering today. And I... <laughs> hallelujah. I want to help you see what God is saying. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God wanted me to reiterate. Let them people see it. Let hope spring up in the soul. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know how this may go, but I just sense the power and the presence of God as I'm standing here. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yeah, if, I, if I get too much... You, you pull my coattails. All right, it's time for me to share. All right, because I, I, I feel stirred in my soul, I tell you. Glory, 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 glory. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Ooh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I saw I, there's something in the book of Revelation when they got a glimpse of him when the word of God called uh, it, it, on his 
his thigh was written the word of God but but it what also was written the phrase faithful and true. true. Faithful and true. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. I, I, I'm going to give a little bit and then Juan is going to share a little bit. I'm going to be talking about God is light. And in him there's no darkness at all. My God, my God. You see, he dwell in unapproachable light. Yes. Light where no mortal can, can, can get there. He's God. And uh, so as, 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 as the recipients of that light, our lives are deposited. We, we, are, we become uh, uh, deposits. And so this light that he deposits in us must shine on a constant basis. So we're going to talk a little more about it, but before, you look like you want to say something. You, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm excited, so I'm, you got to you Just be excited. pull my coattail here. All right. Have your way. But let, let me calm down here. There's... <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Mm. My God. Glory. Stop. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is increasing in this place. Hallelujah. And don't mind us. Don't look at us. Don't look at us. We sit right where you sit. We, we're spectating too. But when he moves, we're going to move with him. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We're not here to be entertainers. Yes. The glory of the Lord oh, yeah. is in this place. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Oh, yes. This place is being hollowed. Hallelujah. For his glory. Yes, Lord. And Hallelujah. it's something for God to manifest his glory yes. in an atmosphere. Ooh, yes, Lord. The atmosphere has to be conducive yes. to his presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ooh, glory, glory. glory to God. Ah, mm, Hallelujah. Mm, mm. So we're trying to get ourselves together. Yes. Wow. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. So we can deliver what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes, Lord. Glory mm. to God. This this is a high time in God. Yes, yes, yes. You 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 can't. You can't. Sacrifice, deny yourself, seek the Lord, and he not be found. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Now, that is right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word backs us up. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. It says, seek him while he may be found. Yes. Call on him. Call upon him. While he is near. Now, we're going to get through this by the grace of God. He's a good savior. The Lord just kind of dropped into my heart to share a little bit about the personal testimony. I, I, and I'm saying this for this reason. That we might be reminded that God is faithful. Yes, he is. God knows. I remember when I started out, long before I started a pastor. He called me full time and, and uh, we went through so much. My daughters, they all, especially Tricia and Nidra, can recall how difficult it was. And then the persecutions came from my siblings and my parents. But I heard the voice of God. And I stepped out in faith to obey him. Yes. But the situation and the circumstances seemed to contradict common sense and wisdom. And so I had to bear this pain until the Lord vindicated me. And that took some years. But before my mother was put in the grave, she bore witness 
Leave him alone. He's hearing from God. She bore witness. I remember she was in Chapel Hill there and she was not expecting to live. And I called Dad and said, Dad, I can't come. I'm not in a position to come. He got upset. And he said some things. But I couldn't do nothing about it. So I called up there, got the number, prayed for her the next day. She was totally healed and went home. But it's a series of incidents where God began to vindicate us. And if you are trusting God for something that God told you to do, and it's not, it doesn't look like it's working out, I want to encourage you, stay the course. Amen. Be faithful to God. God's going to do his part. Oh, yes. You stay the course. Yes. In a way, we stayed the course, and then, uh, but we went through many years. Lights got turned off, gas turned off, and one day they were coming up and said, we're coming up to see you. And thought, oh, God, they can't come now. But the man had just turned off my gas. I said, oh, God, they can't come now. But they came. And we did everything we could to keep him from knowing that that gas was turned off. <laughs> but they found out. Boy, he lit in on me again. It's going to cost you something sometime, you know. If you really want to follow God yes, and obey him, yes. don't think it's going to be rosy all the time. Yes, Amen. The word will be tried. Hey, glory. Joseph stepped out in faith. God gave him visions. And Joseph, uh, he enjoyed telling what God, what God was going to do and all that, but he had no idea right. what he had to go through. Yeah. Threw him in a dungeon, falsely accused him, Locked up for a few years. But the vision when the appointed time came. Oh, yes. God brought him out of prison. Somebody need to hear this today. Oh, yes. God brought him out of the prison. Hallelujah. Yes. Make a long story short. These are the best days of my life. I did nothing to deserve it. But try to obey God. That's it. I want to encourage you to be faithful to God. Yes. Be faithful to God. Walk in the light. Oh, yes. Be true to God. Be true to God. Yes, hallelujah. Be faithful. Yeah. And when you serve, serve with the understanding that his eyes are on you at all times. Oh. Yes, hallelujah. Don't try to pull nothing over on him. You know, God sees everything. Isn't that right? Walk before him and be sincere. Yes. And God will show up. And he'll do things for you. And your latter end shall be great. Come on, give him some praise. He's deserving. The Lord laid on my heart to share about holiness. We, we all know what holiness is. Mm -hmm. We hear it, but do we really know what it is? Yeah. I want to read, read a song because I can't sing. I'm going to read it. <laughs> it's take time to be holy. All right. Take time to be holy. Speak off with the Lord, often with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Mm -hmm. We got to feed on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessings to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends and thy conduct, his likeness will see. You know, we say we want to be like Jesus, but we ain't looking like him. 
But if we stay in his presence mm -hmm. and get in his presence, mm -hmm. we'll start looking like him. Yes, God. We'll start talking like him. We'll start acting like him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what the psalmist is saying. He says, take time to be holy. Him be thy God. Let Jesus be your God. Mm -hmm. And run not before him. Don't get ahead of God. Don't let your aspirations and your desires go before him. Wait on the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, there, there's uh, times that we have to wait when it don't feel right, when it don't look right. You only know if you're in line with God or not, but you got to wait mm -hmm. on the Lord. Yes. And then when we wait, we got to be of good courage. Yes. That he might strengthen us while we're waiting. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, whatever be tied, whatever you're going through, in joy or in sorrow, still follow the Lord. And look into Jesus, still trusting in his word. Because his word is the same yesterday, today, forever. The word is eternally settled in heaven. His word changed not. Yes. He is his word. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then it says, take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Yes. Be at peace yes. in your soul. Each thought and each motive, let it beneath, be beneath his control. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Thus led by his spirit, to fountains of love, thou shalt, thou soon shalt be fitted for service above. You know, the psalm tells us how that we got to talk to the Lord often. We got to abide in him. We got to feed on his word. We got to make friends of God's children, and the children of God should not be our enemy. We shouldn't be fighting, but we should pursue peace yes. with all men. Yes. Pursue the peace of God. Mm -hmm. You know what? This might not be popular, but it's right. And I know it's right. Hallelujah. And then he says, looking unto Jesus, don't go ahead of him. Wait on him. Whatever the situation, whatever you're going through, whether it's in joy or in sorrow, still follow him. Yes. Don't give up. Huh? Don't bail out. Don't despair. Don't be, allow the enemy to make you weary. If you're doing what you know to do and it's According to the word of God, it's right. Yes. And God don't see like man see. You know, when we pick at each other, find fault in one another, but God is not like that. He loved the person that I'm turning my head around, away from, or, you know, being indifferent toward. God loved them just as much as he loved me. Because he's not fickle. You know, God's love is not like ours. He's well adjusted. We are maladjusted. We trying to get adjusted. But God is very well adjusted. So what your enemy do to you or what you don't like what they do or how they say it or you know how they look at you. You know, God don't care about that. You know what I mean? The Lord taught me that it's trumpet. He said, forgive quickly. Okay, right. Amen. Somebody will you, they said something that you didn't want to, you didn't particularly like. He said, forgive them quickly. Be quick to forgive them. Yeah. Right. Come back, Lord, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. And then let it go. We'll stay with you, Mike. I'm sorry. We'll stay with you. Take it with you. Okay. Let that thing go. Because you haven't been perfected. They aren't perfected. And we're all leaning and depending on the Lord. 
And he loves us all the same. You know? So, my thought is the way of holiness. Holiness is our way of life. And when I say our, everybody in this room, unless you're not saved. If you're not saved, what was you? It's time to get saved. It's time to get right with God. Amen. Time is winding up. There's no more time for games. No more time for pity parties. We got to man up. We got to know who we are and walk in who we are. Because the world is looking for hope. They're looking for the light. And we're the light of the Lord. Amen. I want to just share some scriptures. Let, let me read um, 2 Corinthians. And the title of it is Be Holy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Old Corinthians, verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. We have spoken openly to you, this is Paul, our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness or unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? You don't have no fellowship. Mm-hmm. The light exposes the darkness and the darkness try to put out the light. Mm-hmm. So no fellowship. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What do you have in common? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. We're the temple, not the building. Mm -hmm. We are the temple. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, verse 17, therefore, this is the instruction. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, there's a lot of power in that passage. Because our identity is with the Father. As he is light, we are lights in this world. As he is holy, so are we. Amen? Amen. Chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, Ain't no good thing in the flesh and of the spirit. In the spirit, in our spirit, there's woundings, there's hurts, there's traumas, there's things that cause us to be broken. Physically, we look okay, but on the inside, we cripple. Amen? We know about that healing and restoration, right? So, we got to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. We got to allow God to heal those deep places in our hearts. Because the spirit of God is life and it can't flow in woundedness. Because if you're wounded, what's come out, what's going to come out of you is what's in it. Woundedness. Fear, insecurity, worry, distrust, 
these are the things that God has to heal, and we have to allow him to heal to get to so that we can be the holy vessel that's carrying his presence. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can't be fussing each other out and then expect God to speak through us. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to make it plain and real. I had a a vision the other night, a dream, and in the dream, it was two Christians. And the husband was abusive and mean to the wife. And I, I, I guess I can interpret that a lot of different ways, but in the natural, abuse is not fun. And we were not made to be abused, women or men. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because we're called to love one another as ourselves. Yes. Yes, yes. We're not called to batter and beat and ill treat one another. Mm-hmm. Love is of God. Yes, yes, so mm-hmm. if, if we're there, we got to get that right. Amen. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. See, we got to perfect that. That's our part. God is in us. But we have to perfect holiness. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, Jesus will present us faultless and blameless at his coming. That means his spirit in us is to sanctify us and have us a ready prepared vessel at his coming. So we can be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Yes. We don't hear that anymore. Hey, people ain't talking about going back with Jesus. That's right. You hear it? No. I don't hear it on the radio. Anybody out there hear it? Not really. <laughs> You hear anybody say, be holy? As I am holy, this is the word of the Lord. He said, holiness without which no man, the bishop or whoever, Mm -hmm. if he ain't holy, if the Pope ain't holy, (laughs) if a Muhammad ain't holy, Mm -hmm. he ain't going to see the Lord. If I'm not holy, I ain't going to see him either. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness without which no man going to see the Lord. And all of our doing, if we come to church 24-7 and we're not living holy, you know what holiness is? Holy is being consecrated, devout, having a reverent fear. For your creator. Yes. Being set apart for his purposes and use. Yes. You know what? In the Old Testament, not only did God expect the people to be separated unto him, they, they all the instruments. They all uh, they, uh, hollowed the clothing that the priest wore. You know, when you went in the house of the Lord, there was a holiness. There was a presence that when you, before you got in the door, you were praying and repenting and trying to get your soul right. Where is the presence where we fear God? I ain't finished. I, I mean, honey, you, you want to interject here? I mean, look, this word got me straightened out. I ain't telling you because I got it all together. I'm telling you because he gave it to me and I got to get it together. I'll share a little and then we get back to her again. Okay. I remember uh, when God was working on me and my wife to draw close to him and to um, become more Christ-like and more unified 
my first wife. So we went through some challenges there. And in 1987, I remember God spoke to me and he said, Larry, now you have to see this. That's how he spoke it to me. Uh-huh. And when God kind of talks like that, I know it's, I really need to listen. I really need to pay attention. He said, now you have to see this. He says, the devil is behind arguments. And so when he said that, I thought, so that means if me and my wife is arguing, we're actually obeying the devil. We're being influenced by the devil. And yet we're children of light. I said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. That was in 1987. That's when I made a pact with God that whatever he needed to do in me to keep me from going to war with my wife in disagreement, to do it. And uh, did it happen right away? No, it didn't. But the point that I'm making is we do have to make every effort to please the Lord. It's not necessarily easy, but the Lord brought us to the place, and while he was talking to me, he was talking to her, and he told her, he says, your husband is not only your husband, but he's your brother. Uh -huh. And the devil is the accuser of the brethren. She took that thing, and I took what God gave to me, and we began to say, no, 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 the devil is not love. So when we got an argument, if we started, to, then we would remember what God said. Uh -huh. We're being influenced by the wrong spirit uh -huh. when we don't want to take down. Am I being clear? You're clear. Sometimes, maybe one, or ourselves or the spouse, don't want to take down. We want to get the last word in. That's not the spirit of Jesus. That's the spirit of the enemy. Yes. He wants you to be like that because he knows that if you, you got to get that last word in, he keep you going. That's right. But when you just say, okay, it doesn't really matter. You know, I'm not getting involved in an argument. My, I, I shared this in, in because the Lord told me to just take some time and share some of the things he brought me through. And then I remember learning something from my father. Now, this, this ought to help somebody. My father had a lot of pride. I mean a lot of pride. And, but he learned something. When he and my mother would get to arguing, <clears throat> when he saw that argument was something that she enjoyed doing, <laughs> he said, oh, no. See, he was trying to live right. Uh -huh. And he understood that, boy, She's waiting for an argument. And so what, what he, he decided to do, he would say, he'd say a few words, and when that thing started to come up, he said, I ain't got no more to say. <laughs> and you couldn't get him to push that point anymore because he understood. Yes. My wife is fiery, and she gonna, she's going to sit right there, get tit for tat, and she's not going to let go. But guess what it did in the long run? This is my mother's testimony after several years. She said, one of the things that stopped me from arguing with your dad, because he wouldn't argue back. <laughs> and she said, this is what she said. Now, my mother's dead and gone, but these are the words she said to me and my brothers. She said, that used to make me so mad when I couldn't get him to argue back. But you know what? <laughs> and she said, I got tired of being mad. And I decided that I would stop. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I hope this will help somebody. If you just feel like you got to get the last word, I'm telling you, you, you off on the wrong foot. I'm telling you. Because the devil loves that. He loves you to death when you do that. That's he'll, just, right. he'll keep feeding you just as fast as you can think. Yep, that's right. Before you know it, you'll be, so, you'll be huffing and puffing because he's feeding you. Feeding into your spirit. Yes. Yeah, you know, you take that, you know that, you know what it said? You see, see, see what it said? Next thing you know, you're so mad you don't want to do anything. 
But when you, you can overcome him, yes. when you discern his tricks, when you understand how he works, tell him, no, 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 you're not going to take me there. I refuse to go there. That's right. And he can't do a thing about it. Amen. He'll come back in another, somewhere else to try to and see if you really mean business. But when he comes there, he says, nope, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. The Lord fights our battles. Yes. But if we fight him, he can't fight them. That's right. <laughs> And so the Lord was teaching me how to take down. No, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to get the last word. That's not important. What is important is that you discern where it's coming from. That's right. And don't get caught up in it. Needless to say, before she died, we're getting along just fine. Hallelujah. 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 Now, okay, I'm going to say this. If I felt like I was more spiritual... And I ought to been the one to take down. That's right. Uh oh, somebody said, oh, okay. <laughs> let me out, y'all. Let me out. <laughs> he said, Give an honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Isn't that right? All right now. Love your wives. Men love your wives. Wives, be submissive to your husband. Don't go tit for tat for them. Don't make it hard for them. Support them. We'll do that. God will bless you. I'm not telling you stuff that I made up. God will bless you. We have a very, Lord knows I'm not bragging. I'm doing what I, he asked me to do. We have a good marriage. We have a good marriage. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We have peace in our home. Every day that God sins now it didn't start out that way oh I tell you I just got to tell you somebody I don't know. <laughs> it didn't start out that way uh -huh. we had to be willing to be taught of God yes hallelujah God can get us there I don't care what your background is but we have to be willing to be taught of God. He'll teach you. Yes, he will. And you will. It'll mean so much to you in the days ahead. It's not worth it for you, the children, to see you going back and forth every day that the Lord sent. It hurts them. It hurts them. And then they'll go and get married and swear up and down. I'm not going to marry a man or woman like my mother, like my dad. And they'll go out and they'll get somebody with all the signs look like they're different. Only to discover that after a few years they just like them. <laughs> that is the truth. Because they did not allow that bitterness and that root judgment to take place and for God to heal them. Am I talking to somebody here today? God is fair. But we got to let him go there. Let him go there. In these deep places that don't 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 go around in circles and uh, there's more for you there's more for me there's more for us than going around in circles and arguments there's more for us we're children of light let, let me read something here before I turn back over to my wife turn to Matthew chapter 5 what verse starting at verse 13 Matthew 5 this is what Jesus said Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, where will shall it be salted? It's then forth good for nothing. But to be cast out and to be trodden under for the men. He goes and make it plainer. Ye are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel. But on a candlestick. And it does what? Give light. It gives light to, to all, all that are in, in the, the house. house. What do you mean, Jesus? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. We must let our light shine. Now, I'm going to read these few scriptures here because... 
Uh, let me go to John chapter 3. Move on right on with me, if you will. St. John chapter 3. John 3. Verse 20 and 21. Jesus said, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or discovered. But he that do truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be manifest, made manifest that they are wrought in God. When a person is trying to live right, mm -hmm. they want to hear the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When a person is really wanting to live right before God, they want to hear God's word. They want to hear what he's got to say. But when people are kind of in their sins and don't want to give it up, they don't want to come nowhere near the light, right? Because they don't want what they're doing. To be made clear, manifest, or discovered. But he said that he do, do, that do it, truth comes to the light. You're here because you want to serve the Lord. I am, I'm convinced that if you really didn't want to serve God, you would not be here today. I believe that. Isn't that right? If you are out trying to get something over on God, and you know, then, then uh, especially with the ministry that, like we have, you would not be here. So turn around and give yourselves a hand. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Not yet. Okay. All right. Now look at, look, look at the, um, let's see. Look at uh, 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. Verse John chapter 1 says, verse 5, this then, this is John, the apostle, this then is the message which we've heard of him, him who, Jesus, and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness, is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in, the, in darkness, we do what? No. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. From all sin. All right. One of the last scriptures. Light is truth. Uh -huh. Light is life. And in 3 John, he says... The elder to the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake, which dwell in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be to you. Second. Oh, that's second John, I'm sorry. Third Thank you. John. Third John, verse one. The elder to the well-beloved Gaius whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. The truth is light, right? The light is truth. The light is life. Right? So when we walk in truth, we walk in holiness. We walk in the light. And we have life. Vitality. We walk in the revelation. We walk in the illumination. So the light defined is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Light. Light. Light is illumination. Light is understanding. Light is enlightenment. Light is revelation knowledge. So light, he says, walk in the light as he is in the light. 
And all right, I'm going to let you whack, then I'll come back to conclude. Okay, uh, on that note, I just want to share this little tidbit. Mm -hmm. God wants all, all of us to prosper, especially those of the household of faith. But prosperity should not be a means in itself. It should, shouldn't be an end in itself. I mean, that's not the reason why we're pleasing and seeking God, to be prosperous. It ought to be the result of a quality of life, commitment, dedication, and action that is in line with God's word. Literally means to help on the road or succeed in reaching it clearly implies that divine prosperity is not a monetary passing phenomenon, but rather it is an ongoing, progressing state of success and well-being. It is intended for every area of our lives, the spiritual, the physical, and emotional, and the material. However, God does not want us to unduly emphasize any one area. Sometimes we just don't have a balance. Either we're going for the spiritual and forsaking the natural. You know, or we're hyping on the emotional and forgetting the natural or the spiritual. You know, but God wants us to have a balance. If we live, this is why holiness is so important, because it promises us a blessed life. Okay, now I want you to turn to Isaiah. Are we getting too long? Okay. Um, Isaiah 5.16. Um... All right, our attitude and our uh, posture before God is, should be holy. And Isaiah 16 said, But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall be hallowed in righteousness. Okay, and then I want you to turn to um, Isaiah 8.13. Well, I'm going to go up to verse, uh, verse 11. For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of the people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hollow. Let him be your fear, let him be your dread. Uh, when I read that, I thought about the coronavirus and how our whole world is upside down because of that virus. But if people are fearful, they're living in dread. But the word of God instructs us, don't let that be your fear. Huh? He said, the Lord of hosts shall you hollow. Let him be your fear. Let him be your uh, dread. He would be a sanctuary, a safe place, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Why? Because they wasn't uh, consecrating themselves. They weren't living holy. They had turned to false idols. And he said, and many among them shall stumble. They shall fall and be broken and be snared and taken. He said, bind up the testimony, seal the log among my disciples, and I will wait on the Lord, who hides his faith from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. And uh, he says, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. In other words, we are representing God from, uh, from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Verse 19 says, and when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? 
Should they see the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They will pass through it hard pressed. Now, when we're living God, we're in a safe place. But when we're living below his standard, then calamities come to us, troubles come to us, hardship come to us, lack come to us. You know, let's verse 2 says, they will pass through it, it, it hard pressed and hungry. And it shall happen when they are hungry that they will be enraged and curse their king and their God because they're so angry for what they're suffering. But they're suffering because they didn't obey God. They are suffering because they didn't sanctify themselves in God. You know, the Bible says, holiness without shall no man see the Lord. People are mad. They're mad at God because they're going through, but they haven't repented and turned back to God. And every time we repent and turn to God, he heals us, he blesses us, he restores us, he strengthens us, he gives us more faith to go on to continue in him. But if we do not that, we're going to suffer the calamities and the judgments that come upon the world. It's a blessing to be holy, honey. That is so true. It is. is and, and sometimes, you know, I, I heard, uh, I was with a few ministers one time. And uh, so one minister was, when he was trying to talk about grace, he said, when people talk about holiness, they don't understand grace. And I thought, sound like he doesn't understand grace, you know. But uh, grace does not mean we, we're not supposed to live holy. Grace comes that we might be holy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, but, uh, so remember this, saints. What, what I feel God is trying to show us is that you're called for a purpose. Yes. And you're my children. You're my people. Yes. And we must reflect him. Yes. And uh, God, he, he, this is what he said to me. He said the reason more souls are not coming to Jesus is because he is not properly being represented. Yes. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If we, when we, represent him in our homes, yes. on our jobs, yes. in the workplace, yes. In the church, when we properly represent him, when we properly represent him from the pulpit, when we properly represent him, people are going to turn to Jesus. Yes, yes. Because they're going to see him. And if a person that's unsaved and all they see is the same thing that they're struggling with, don't even try it. They're not coming. Because this is, I can say, where I am. That's right. And do that. That's right. But when they see a change, it makes them want this God that we're talking about. Exactly. We have to let our lights shine before humanity that they may see, observe, uh -huh. right? Right. And glorify our Father which is in heaven. I remember God told, told me told me one time, and I was kind of dealing with my daughters the way all I knew really. What I saw, the image that I saw, the way God did, that my dad dealt with us. So one day I was about to reprimand uh, my oldest daughter. She ain't here, but. <laughs> 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 but anyway, <laughs> I was about to reprimand her. We was in the car, about four of us, and Jesse wasn't born. And I was about to use the same old technique, the threats, do this, do that, don't, I'm going to do this. Well, my dad used to say, boy, I'm going to whip you. That was his favorite thing. He, that's how he kept us in line. Boy, I'm going to whip you. And uh, 
there was always a threat. That's how he kept us in line. So one day I attempted to do the same thing. Then the Holy Ghost checked me. He said, Holy, he said, is that the way I deal with you? I thought, well, no, but, you know, I, I wanted to say, you're well adjusted. I'm not, you know. <laughs> But he started that day. And every time from there on I started to try to uh, deal with my daughters, he was always checking me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let me tell you the good thing. Let me tell you the good thing. Now, it cost me. I had to die, you know. <laughs> die from the images that I had, right? I could say, that's what me, my dad did. I didn't turn out so bad, you know, but I couldn't use that because God was saying, no, I want to teach you a better way. That's right. But do you think they turned out pretty good? I mean, <laughs> come on, give God a lot of praise. Hallelujah. Y'all saved, yeah. filled with God, loving God, pursuing God. I can't ask for no better. Amen. But I'm saying that to say this, it cost me. Yeah. I had to put myself aside. Somebody, I must be, I don't know, is somebody God talking to here? Men, I, I don't know, but I'm just sharing here. <laughs> but the Lord, he, he was just he was telling me, you know. But I'm saying this to say that God loves you. He loves your family. Yes, he does. He loves you. Don't let no situation and nobody tell you differently. God loves you. Yes, he does. And he wants the best for you yes. and the best for your family. Yes, he does. He really, really does. And I just want to really, that's, the, the, that's what I feel with the Holy Spirit, really trying to say to us, God is for us. He is not against us. He's not trying to lead us down some uh, path of strictness that take all the fun out of life. That's right. not what he's doing. Amen. But he died that we might live. Yes, he did. He, he loves us. And if you, we do it God's way. Yes. The joy that you really want. And the peace that you really desire. Yes. You'll have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to uh, encourage you that holiness is not boring. That's right. Holiness is just not familiar to us, but holiness is, is, is pleasant. Yes, you know, is. you want to be around people that are holy. Mm -hmm. You can feel of something coming from them. That's yes. the presence of the Lord. Yes, yes. Because we are, are to be carriers of the presence of God. Yes. Holiness just means that you are separated from... The ways of the world that are displeasing to God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't have fun while living in the world. Because mm -hmm. God made all things for us to enjoy. Mm -hmm. But he also wants us to have a balance mm -hmm. in the things that we entertain ourselves with. Yeah. Don't let it be evil. Don't let it be dirty. You know, but there's a lot of things as believers we can do to enjoy this life and be fulfilled. Amen. 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 So I don't want you to get it twisted. Because mm -hmm. some people think of holiness a certain way is the law. Mm -hmm. No do's and don't, you can't do this. No, we're not talking about that because we're under grace. Separated life. Yes. yes. But being separated yes. unto God and understanding who you are and whose you are. Amen. That he has a standard, and we have to uphold that standard. But I want to uh, share some steps of holiness. God's people have often gotten in trouble by employing unholy means toward holy ends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and thinking about holy things in an unholy way. These are the things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The end do not justify the means. Mm -hmm. Unholy mythology leads to unholy alliances mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that can become our undoing. Mm -hmm. Reject spiritual counsel from anyone who does not speak according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Avoid any forms of the occult mm -hmm. and spiritism. Mm -hmm. 
the soothsayers, the psychics, mm -hmm. and the uh, pr prostitute and prophets mm -hmm. that want to prostitute you for your money mm -hmm. and they'll give you a word that's not of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't buy into that. That's right. And don't be having itchy ears going to everybody for a word. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's not safe. That's right. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, be wary of plans or relationship God has not ordained. Mm -hmm. And therefore will not bless. Mm -hmm. Now God knows that there are people that have negative influences. And so if you associate with them. If you're not strong. Mm -hmm. They can pull you away from your steadfastness. Yes, yes, that's right. You know, so you don't want to have an unholy alliance. You got a pal, you know he's doing wrong and acting wrong and don't halfway do you right. But for some reason, you want to hang out with him. Unholy alliance. Okay. Seek the Lord for wisdom and making plans and entering covenantal relationships. Seek the Lord for wisdom. I ask the Lord to give me friends. Because I don't want to hang out with everybody. And some Christians I don't want to hang out with. Can I be honest? Yeah. Humility is essential to righteous Christ-like behavior. Humility and meekness are spirit and gender characteristics in the, in the mature believer. Their opposites, pride and arrogance, held diabolical source. That pastor was just talking about that. Humility refuses to promote its own interests, but looks out rather for the interests of others. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. Understand this is the only way to be cleansed and gain a clear perspective on your call to ministry. Beware of selfish ambitions that sets itself above God and pride that takes glory from God. Understand that they are the hallmarks of Satan's rebellion through which he became God's enemy. Pride and arrogance. They are our enemy. And most of the time the enemy is working in us. But we need to recognize it and ask God to help us to overcome it. Okay, hunger and thirst after the knowledge of the Lord, Philippians 3, 10 to 13, and not after the personal things this world offers. Continually pray for a fresh movement of the Holy Spirit and revival in your own personal life. Faith takes God at his word when circumstances seem to deny the truth of, the, of his promises. Our ability to endure to the end will depend upon our allowing the Holy Spirit to train us in this kind of faith, the God kind of faith, you know. So don't get upset with God when you're going through trials. And they might be bitter. But God is working a more excellent weight of glory in our lives. And I'm done. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Don't go anywhere yet. Oh, okay. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here and go back to the point that I made. We're lights, so we want to properly represent God wherever we are. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are and whose you are. Let's begin right away for those that are not and those that are doing it. Let's continue to keep, be God conscious. So I want to represent God well. Yes. Whatever I say, whatever I do, whatever discipline, I want to represent God well. Some scriptures concerning that. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Live your lives to please God and integrity before God. One of the things about Job is God boasted on his integrity before God. He wasn't serving God for people. He was serving God for who God was. And so he cared, had that integrity before God. Wherever he was, he did that because of integrity before God. Yes, yes. So let's keep integrity before God. Um, and then the Bible says, do all things without murmuring and complaining and disputing, right? Yes. That we may be blameless and harmless. Because when we murmur and complain and dispute, we're actually going to, uh, um, you know, it'll cause harm. So 
do all, let's do all things without murmuring and disputing. We find ourselves murmuring and complaining about this. Oops, let me, let me stop that. That's not pleasing to God. We suffer, if we, uh, we, uh, we suffer for, from a lack of identity. We are sons of God. We're pilgrims and strangers. This world is just not our home. Amen. Now I want you to think with me right now. How many times have you seen these TV programs where you got somebody that's out of space and they come, they look like humans, but they're from out of space. So they carry with them an unusual power beyond the humans. You remember that? Okay, I want you to see yourself like that. Because we're aliens, we're strangers, and the power that God wants to uh, use us and to display before people is uh, to become lights. We deliver people that need deliverance. Yes. We bring healing when people are sick. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. We bring healing to the brokenheartedness of people. This is that glory that's in us, and it's that power we may look just like ordinary people, but there's something supernatural about our lives. And, and so God wants us, because he said we're strangers. In other words, you, you look just like the world in the natural, but there's something more about you. You've got the power through Christ to lay hands on people and they'll recover. Yes. You've got the power to speak to people and bring them from a dark state yes. into a state of light. You've yes. got that power. Power. So you're different, and we must walk and be conscious of the fact that we are different. We're not just like the ordinary. We are sons of God and daughters of God. Of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then, so we want to um, display that before our loved ones and before friends and relatives who are not saved, that people, because people are always watching us, right? The Bible says concerning the false prophets, you shall know them how? By their fruit. By their fruit. So we cannot just say the right thing. We must do the, the right, right thing. Isn't that right? Amen. It's not what we say. It's by the fruit, fruit. that we bear as Amen. children of God. Everybody with me? Amen. So let's raise the standards. All right? And then when you think about light and darkness, remember... Uh, I, I had a, a, a ballpoint pen just a couple of days ago and I was sitting down writing thoughts that came to me. And this pen, it would write a, a word and the next word it wouldn't, the ink wouldn't come out. And so I scribbled. And when I scribbled, it, it wrote. I'd go back to try to write that word and it wouldn't write. And that went on for a couple of minutes and then all of a sudden I just threw it away, right? Because it wasn't serving its purpose. And it was frustrating to me, right? Now I want you to see how it can be to our owner, the Lord, when we shine one day, we're in darkness another day. It's like, that's frustrating. You know what I'm saying? Another <laughs> instance that I had, a situation where I had a flashlight, and I really, need, I really needed some light. It was dark. And that flashlight, the battery had gone down. And it was, you know, and I turned it on, and it gave us a little tiny bit of light. And it wasn't enough to serve my purpose. And I hit it and shook it. But it wasn't serving my purpose. Uh -huh. But it was a flashlight. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Same way with God. Yes. We're lights in the world. He yes. wants to get glory out of our lives wherever yes. we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're living for him, brothers and sisters. And I just want to really drive that point home. This is what the Lord is saying. Yes. I want you to live and walk in integrity like you know that I'm watching you, not in an ill way, but that my eyes are upon you for good. Isn't yes. that right? Hallelujah. So let's walk as children of God, being conscious of the God that we serve. And finally, in conclusion, he said we bring the old attitudes and old ways of doing into the new life. Yes. So there has to be a renewal. Of the mind. Of the mind. Mm -hmm. He said Israel kept going in circles. Because of their murmuring. And complaining. At every junction. I had to learn. To stop complaining. Mm -hmm. I had to learn. To stop complaining. Because I found out. 
that complaining was burying me and not bringing me up. The more I complained, the lower I went. So after a while I said, oh. And I think it was in the early 80s of the, of the, the Holy God came to me and because I've been, I was complaining, God, this, that, that. I just want to see a change, and I couldn't figure out why. And then finally, the Lord came to me. He said, "Now, son, you're gonna have to stop, and you're gonna have to get a hold of this thing." And when he came like that, I knew he, he was serious. I was like, "Whoa, yeah, he's serious." He said, "You're gonna have to get, you're gonna have to settle down, and you're gonna have to wait on me, and you're gonna have to get a hold of this thing." That was the beginning of some changes. Because, you know, every now and then God would kind of put his foot and I said, okay now, I've been talking to you about this long enough. I want you to stop it. And uh, he might not say it quite that tough. <laughs> but you get the picture, you know what I'm saying? Few, I had a few of those in my life. And it brought about a change. So he, he works to bring leaders up to standard yes. so that they can be an example, right? Amen. So many of you in the congregation, you're leaders and God is working on you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Yes. But he's working on you because he wants to model your life. Yes. And he wants people to see that he can work in a life and cause that life to shine and to be molded and fashioned to his glory and praise. Yes. And then he's going to get honor out of your life. The end product is what you want to see. Right? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Amen. God's not. And I, I started to say. I started to say. He's not killing us. But yes he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's allowing us to be He's allowing us to die. That's yes. what I'm saying. And it's a good dying when you die to yourself. Die to yourself. You live unto God. Yes. Come on, let's give God some praise now. Hallelujah. <laughs> let's, let's stand together on our feet and just begin to thank the Lord. We want to walk as light and walk in the light. Because he's.